Hello friends, in today's video we will discuss about the talent job execution time and how to capture the total time taken for the completion of the job. So in general if we need to calculate the execution time for any program or execution, we need to capture the start time of the job and end time of the job. So based on the start and end time we can calculate the time difference like end time minus start time. So we can get the time difference between the start time and end time. And we can capture the start time of the job using the talent inbuilt component t chronometer start. So you can get this component from the palette or you can just type the component name in the designer window so just the type the component name you can get the component so once you get the component you need to uh, attach with the t pre job so this t pre job is a component which will get executed this is the first component which will get executed when you run the job and t uh, post job is the last component which will get executed after the actual job execution so this is something like your in Java we do right like import statement so this will be the first statement to get executed so once you run the job the flow will come to t pre job then it will come to t chronometer start so once you once the component execution comes you can get the value using the global variable or t chronometer start time and then once the job execution is completed you can print the execution time again using the global variable of t chronometer stop and you can get the you can get the global variable using the control space just type the component name and type control space you will get the list of global variable associated with the t chronometer start and stop so you can see here stop time then for displaying uh, we are using the system dot out print line so now let's run the job to see like how much time uh, this particular job is taking using the t chronometer start and stop So the actual execution like we are generating some rows and we are updating in the database table so around we have some thousand rows so now the job execution is completed now you can see the values the chronometer start time and end time uh, but the problem here is this is in the long uh, data type and it is not in human readable format so if if you ask me like how much time this job took we cannot uh, do we need to do some custom calculation to get the actual time so for that what we need to do is so once we get the start time so the start time is in the long format so we need to convert from long to a date type so for that we need to use some custom java coding so we need to assign this t chronometer start to a long variable and then using the date object we are converting from long to date converting from long to date And then I'm assigning the start time to a context variable uh, because we need to calculate the time difference right in the T pro uh, post job because the start time scope is available only to this T Java component. So to use the start time in the subsequent flow, we are assigning the start time to a context variable. And then I'm printing that using the system dot print line. Uh, similarly for the T chronometer stop time. we are assigning to a long variable then again from long to date we are converting and that end time we are assigning to it assigning to the context variable and again we are printing start time and end time now let's run the job see earlier it was in the long format but if you see now it is in the proper uh, human readable format started on 117 so now we have the start time and end time but to calculate the actual time difference so we need to do the subtraction of end time using the minus time so again for that we need uh, this java coding so, so we have the start time and end time using the context variable now uh, we are assigning again the start time and end time to the date variables using the date object because when, once we have the long difference of d2.getTime and d2.get1.getTime so using this we are actually calculating the, the time difference and this is normal max calculation so if we need to get the difference the time difference divided by 100 into 60 uh, similarly if we need to get in minutes time difference divided by 60 into 1000 again divided by 60 uh, this is you know you mean you need to know a little bit of max to do these calculations so once we get the time difference in minutes, seconds and hours, uh, we are printing that using the 
system dot auto print line and then again you know, we are just assigning the uh, minutes difference to the contrast duration variable Okay, the job is completed. So we are processing some thousand records to the DB output. So if you see, uh, we have the start time and end time, and the actual execution time took nine seconds. So the duration time taken for the execution is this is hours, uh, minutes, and seconds. Okay, so it's days, hours, minutes, and seconds. Uh, so this one we have in the console, uh, but in few scenarios like we need to capture this stats to the database table. Uh, so that we can refer in the later part because when you run the job next time you might not get this console if you need to uh, compare the compare the previous runs you might not get this data so for that uh, we are just capturing this in the audit table so we have the audit table called the job.audit so in that we have job name, status, start time, end time and duration so again as I told start time we are capturing using the context dot start time uh, this long variable we are assigning to the date then the date is assigned to a context variable uh, similarly for the t chronometer stop we are assigning the end time using the context dot end time then duration uh, we are applying some custom java logic to get the actual duration using the uh, t2 dot get time and t1 dot get time and we are applying some calculation to get the actual time differences so once we have the start time end time and duration uh, we can just update this values to the database table so in the so in the t pre job we are opening open the connection and then in the tdb output we are just uh, making use of the existing connection then in the table we are giving the table name and action on table now the table is already created so we can keep it as default and then if you see the column names so we have the job name and this is the global variable name so if you need to get the actual job name so the job name is the chronometer start and stop to get the job name we can get the global variable so to get this global variable you can just type job and control space so this global dot job name will get you the actual job name then status is hard coded as complete uh, then the start time is we are getting using the context dot start time end time and duration now let's run the job and see how this value is getting populated to the database table okay so you can see the job name so this job name we got from the global variable job name and status is completed start time end time and total duration so the first one is days and hours minutes and seconds uh, but if you see in console we are getting the detailed uh, start time like hour minutes and seconds but if you see in SQL developer only we have the date uh, by default the NLS date format in SQL developer will be the DDMMYY uh, if you need to get the actual timestamp you can apply to care to the start time and end time or you can alter the NLS date format so I will just reiterate the so we can get the start time using the t chronometer, chronometer start so by default it will be in the long format so you need to convert from long to date then again similarly we can get the end time using t chronometer stop then again from long to date so once you have start time and end time to get the time differences you need to minus the end time with the start time so once we get that uh, we can get the duration so once we have all the three variable like start time end time and duration just for the auditing purposes we can log that to the database table so that you can do using the tdb output and also the tdb row because i use tdb output uh, just with the help of tmap just to for the demonstration purpose to see the values here yeah thank you friends